Good morrow, big houses and future spouses. I want to address this thing real quick. If you've been watching the channel, you know that the microphone on my camera is busted, so I need to use an external microphone. I think this sounds better anyway, but if this distracts you, I'm sorry, we're going to have to deal with it for a little while. If you'd been watching the channel, you would have known that already. Let's start the show. Hi there friends, my name is John and welcome to ADITW, A Day in the Word, the internet's favorite Bible study. I cannot believe we are already in our final week of studying Ruth. And I don't know about you, but for me, it's been really nice to get a little girl power on this show. Whoever said that women in the Bible are not important and cannot be used by God obviously didn't read about my girl Ruth. Oh, can I get an amen? Let's not waste any time though, we got a lot to get through. Let's start by reading Ruth chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. So last week, we ended by talking about how Ruth and Boaz are both people of exceptional character. And so you can see why they make such a good match. In fact, I think that's probably a big reason why they're attracted to one another. And on that point, I want to speak to someone right now who is maybe struggling with a season of loneliness, or maybe who is dating the wrong guy or a bad guy because they've been feeling lonely. And I think what we can learn from this story of Ruth and Boaz is that it's a lot easier to recognize godly character when you already have it yourself. And Boaz's character just continues to shine through in this chapter as he goes to the man who is supposed to be the guardian redeemer. And here, Boaz does absolutely everything right. He meets with the man face to face. He does it in the sight of many witnesses. He says, hey, you know, this is something that I really want, but it's rightfully yours, so I wanted to give you the opportunity to take it first. And what Boaz is doing here is he's going about doing his business, what is called above reproach. Now many of us, we live our lives and we don't necessarily do anything wrong. But when we take a step back and we're honest with ourselves, some of the actions we're taking are pretty shady. The things that we're doing aren't technically wrong or sinful, but they're certainly not good. But being a man or a woman of character means living above reproach. It means going about doing things in the right way, in a way that is pleasing to those who you care about most, and most importantly, it's pleasing to God. Now, at the end of this section, Ruth and Boaz, they're about to go, they're about to get married, it's about to be beautiful, but the text in includes this small blessing given to them by the elders. And these words that the elders leave them with, they're essentially a blessing to the offspring that Ruth and Boaz one day will have. And just you wait and see just how blessed their offspring will be. I honestly don't mean to do these rhymes, they just come out. Let's find out by reading verses 13 through 22. So we see here that Ruth and Boaz, they get married and they have a son together. And by the way, remember all the way back at the beginning of the book when Naomi wanted to be renamed a name that means bitter because she was certain that she would never have a family ever again? Don't place a period where God placed a comma, Naomi. That's all I'm saying. And right at the end of this chapter, the writer throws in a seemingly random ancestry lesson. It tells us that Ruth and Boaz named their son Obed, and that Obed is the father of Jesse, and that Jesse is the father of David. But you see, this ancestry, it's not random. It's put in there very, very specifically. Because that David that is referred to there, that is the same King David who 50 or 60 generations later, his genealogy would bring about a son that was born to two unwed parents named Mary and Joseph in the town of Bethlehem. So to spell it out clearly for you in case you don't get it yet, Ruth is Jesus's great, 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 great grandmother. Now, could you imagine for a second what would have happened if Ruth hadn't clung to Naomi? That one decision, 
to remain faithful to her family, that one decision to choose character, that one decision to live her life above reproach. God took that one small decision and he began to put the wheels in motion in order to use that decision to bring forth the Savior of the world. I wonder what choices are being placed in front of us today where if we could find the courage to make the right choice, to make the choice that a person of character would choose. I wonder if we could find the courage to live above reproach, how might God use that one small decision to bring light into this dark world? Thank you all so much for watching another episode and another book of a day in the Word. We have completed our study of Ruth. I hope it was encouraging for you. I know it was fun for me to sort of dive in and study this book and learn about character and romance and all that stuff. As always, I want you to comment down below and let me know what book you would like us to study next. A lot of you, by the way, have been asking for Revelation. I already did a video on Revelation. It was a couple weeks ago. You should go back in the playlist and check that out. So please, Please give me other book suggestions for where we should go next. Also, next week we're doing a Bible Q&A as sort of a resting period between books. So if you have questions about studying the Bible, the Bible itself, understanding the Bible, reading the Bible, anything like that, please ask questions down below and I will answer those next week. That's all I have for you. I love you all. Have a great day. Keep being awesome. Girl, please.